G'day and welcome, it's Carl Thompson here from Storagecraft Asia Pacific and today I'm glad to be presenting Virtual Boot for Hyper-V. So I'm just here on the Storagecraft website, what we're going to look at is the download section first and how to update SPX to our latest version and what's required to get this to work. So if I go along to the support menu and go along to software updates. What you'll notice here is SPX for Windows, we now have an updated version 6.016. So this 64-bit installer file needs to be installed onto your Hyper-V host. Uh, so you'll need Windows Server 2012 R2, that is the current supported version uh, for this. And obviously you'll need the full installation uh, of server with the GUI. Now on the host, typically people don't back up the host unless you have a requirement to back up that system drive. What we're focusing on is backing up within those virtual machines with the SPX agent. So on the host itself, we don't need to activate or request a trial. We just need to install the software. Because we're not backing it up, there is no licensing required on that host for SPX. Additionally, if we scroll down almost to the bottom here, you'll notice the Storagecraft Virtual Boot Hyper-V plugin. This was also a free download. This also needs to be installed onto the Hyper-V host. So without further ado, I'm just gonna minimize out of this. I am currently on a Hyper-V host, and this is a production server. I've got a bunch of virtual machines already running here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open up Shadow Protect SPX and log into the local session uh, on this console. So again, we don't need to activate this. We're not trying to back up any volumes on that host. We just want it here for the ability to virtual boot. So if I go ahead here and click on virtual boot, the first thing you'll notice is we now have the option here for Hyper-V. So prior to this, we only supported VirtualBox. So that was the free Oracle VirtualBox. You would require a separate physical server with the Oracle VirtualBox software installed to perform a virtual boot. So now we don't need any extra infrastructure, we can utilize our existing produ production environment. So the key thing to note here with Hyper-V is it's missing an option here for the networking. So if I select VirtualBox, you'll note here that it gives you the ability to adjust the network adapter here. With Hyper-V, the option's not there, it will by default disconnect the network adapter, but before you start that machine, you can obviously go into Hyper-V Manager and adjust those settings. So we'll take a look at that in a few moments. Now, as you used to, we click on Add Image File. We can go and browse through, or I've got an existing destination here to an existing Shadow Protect backup chain. Select an image, put in my encryption password if I have one, click OK. So what we're doing is we're attaching the particular back compressed backup image directly into virtual boot. At this point in time, I would go in and add in any additional volumes for this machine. So for example, D drive, um, perhaps in a scenario with crypto locker, you may actually want to roll that back to a previous point in time, for example, and any other volumes. We then need to give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this YouTube 01. And we need to give it some memory. So for the memory, you need to consider what does that virtual machine do? Is it running Exchange? Is it a terminal server? Is it running a SQL server? How much RAM do I need to give it to allow it to perform in the function that it needs to do? Now for testing, you might give it significantly less. Even in a DR scenario, you might give it less, but you just need to consider what is that machine doing? How much memory do I need to allocate it? And then finally, automatically start the virtual machine. So again, it's not going to have the network adapter connected, so you're safe to do this at any time. Uh, in the instance where you want to bridge it back onto an existing network or make any further changes, you may simply untick that box. You'll see it appear in Hyper-V Manager, and at that point, you can go ahead and make any final changes. So I'm going to click Create. You'll see it then it pops up the background tasks wizard. This is where it's loading the image. So what it's doing here, is creating um, uh, basically a staging file to allow it to spin up directly off that compressed image. We can see here in the background, the console has automatically opened for us and Windows is now starting. Now part of that process is to inject the appropriate Windows drivers to allow the server to boot up without basically blue screening or having an issue with a different storage controller. So what this means is this will virtual boot any storage craft backup of a Windows machine 
directly into Hyper-V. So if I had a physical server, any version of VMware, or any of our supported virtual environments, it doesn't matter where that backup came from, Virtual Boot will virtualize that instantly into Hyper-V if you've just seen. It doesn't need to have been a Hyper-V virtual machine to begin with. So very, very easy. You could, of course, have a dedicated Hyper-V server for this virtual boot process for your DR, perhaps at the off-site location, um, or you know, really powerful for dev and testing. Now I can actually virtual boot a production server while it's still running. Um, in its original location and isolate this off into a dev network or, or leave the network disconnected. So really powerful for testing, uh, but also in the instance of a DR scenario or like I said, maybe crypto locker or a site failure and we're, we've gone to an offsite location, what we can do here is obviously if I enable the networking to you know, a production network or, or bridge it back onto a network, as long as Shadow Protect can see that existing backup chain, it can continue to back up. So we stay protected while we're running in this mode. And as with virtual boot, this is a temporary failover. So this is still running off the compressed image. You will notice some slight performance drop because that it's running off that compressed image. But the mechanisms we have in the background where we have a separate write file enable this to work quite effectively. And obviously from here, we can then use StorageCraft Head Start Restore to pre-stage this running machine back into raw VHD, VHDX format, or even back into VMware if we needed to. So really powerful. Um, also, if you did have a physical server, you could use the free StorageCraft recovery environment to do a manual Head Start Restore and revert it back onto physical. So lots of options, really powerful, really awesome that we now have this functionality directly into Hyper-V. So thanks for your time, and hopefully this has been a useful little insight into the capabilities and where SPX is going. Thank you.